I'm Alan Seals, Chief Meteorologist at WKRG News 5, and I've been a broadcaster for more than a quarter of a century. I love what I do. It's a fascinating job that involves science, art, and performance. My day starts by looking up in the sky, checking the clouds, literally. And then even before I come to work, I check the computers to figure out what's going on around this region and the rest of the United States, and sometimes the rest of the world. After I get here to the station, I check our computers, and we have more than a dozen. I check them because they crash, just like your home computer. And the computers help me do my job, but they don't actually do it. My brain is what does the job. So once I get to work, I again will check more weather information. I'll also go to my newsroom to speak to my producers about how much time I'll get to talk about the weather during the newscast in the evening. After I come back to the weather office, I sit down and I start making the forecast by studying satellite, radar, temperature, other weather data. At the same time I'm doing my forecast, I prepare a radio forecast that goes out to radio stations by email as an MP3 file. Throughout the day, I may get calls from the general public about what the weather is or something they've seen. I'll get requests from teachers to go out and speak to schools about weather. And that part's always fun because everybody loves weather. Now, my actual weather segment typically lasts about three minutes, less than that, and I'm speaking to over 80,000 people without reading a script. In addition to that, there's nothing behind me except for a green wall. It takes a lot of coordination, science, and performance skill to be able to talk for exactly a certain amount of time and speak to people who live in more than 10,000 square miles. Now, as a chief meteorologist, I am salaried. In other words, I make the same amount of money every year, regardless of how long I work. On average, in a typical week, I work five days, uh, eight hours a day, which comes out to 40 hours a week. But when the weather's bad, I can work 12 hours, 16 hours. When we get a hurricane, literally, I will stay here at the station for two days in a row. I will sleep in my car in the parking lot. But the good thing is I'll get that time back later in terms of vacation. You might think that talking on TV in front of tens of thousands of people is stressful. Well, for me, it's not stressful because I'm a natural performer and I know that I'm not perfect. I know that I will make mistakes, but I love what I do. And to me, it's fun to give people information that helps them prepare for their lives. Now, there are some weather situations that are very scary to people like tornadoes and hurricanes. For me, it's actually not stressful. It's what I learned in college to study and to tell people what to do to be safe. In my job as a TV meteorologist, the most stress really occurs from the number of things you have to do within a short period of time. And also when you're performing, when things are happening around you that you're not aware of, that makes you very nervous. But the weather itself doesn't really cause a lot of stress for me, even though I know my forecast won't always be perfect. All right, so my job is unique. I'm on TV, people turn on the TV and see me. When I go home, I'm not there. It takes a lot of really important skills to do what I do. The first is a four-year college degree, typically in meteorology. You study physics, calculus, chemistry, uh, even biology. You have to understand how the whole world works. What's also unique for being on TV is you literally have to understand the whole world because news events are often driven by weather and weather creates news events. So in my case, I went to college for four years. I majored in meteorology. I had so much fun that I decided to go to graduate school and get a master's degree. Also because I wanted to learn a little bit more to be more comfortable on camera, but also because I wanted to earn a little more. And one thing that a lot of young folks don't realize is typically the longer you stay in school, the more education you get, the larger your salary is in the longer term. So with a master's degree, I also get to teach meteorology at the local university. So when it comes to TV broadcasting, not a lot of people have master's degrees. But if you want to be a meteorologist, go ahead and get a meteorology master's degree. You could also have a communications master's degree or a journalism master's degree, and that would help to balance out the science and the performing. The bottom line is I can be the best forecaster in the world, but if I can't communicate to the average person, then my, my forecast has no value. Aside from that, the biggest skill in my job is what I learned as a kid playing the trumpet. It is performance. It is making things up as you're going along. Even though you may have a script, you're constantly uh, doing a solo, which is virtually what it is. 
And that means that you can't be afraid to hit a wrong note, realizing that if you make a mistake, you just have to keep going to make sure you get to the end of what it is you're trying to get people to understand. So a lot of people in TV news, whether it's weather or um, news anchors or sports anchors, we have backgrounds in performance, whether it's singing, acting, uh, dancing. We naturally are fairly comfortable in front of crowds. And those are things that you can learn on your own. You don't need a college degree to be a performer, but that degree will help you in the long run in broadcasting. It also gives you more opportunities outside of broadcasting. All right, so my job is unique. People look at me and say, oh, you make a lot of money. You have an easy job. All you do is point at the map and go home and get paid a lot of money. Well, that's not exactly true. The truth is, I do make a lot of money, but compared to other people with equal education, I don't make that much money, but it's a good amount. So the best part of my job is not the money, it's helping people on a daily basis, helping them know whether it's going to rain or be dry on their journeys, especially helping them in weather crises like hurricanes and tornadoes on how to be safe, how to protect their families. The other really enjoyable part about my job is speaking to young folks and older folks and seeing them smile as they learn how the world works. Uh, especially if I show them something that they've seen all their life and never figured out and I make it clear, you can see the light bulb go off where they've learned something and they'll keep that for the rest of their lives. So helping people in many different ways is the best part of my job. The worst part, I think for most people, the worst part is once you become what's known as a celebrity or a public figure, you cannot turn that switch off. Everywhere you go, people are watching you. They want to see what you're doing, what you're wearing, who you're with, what kind of car you drive, uh, where you go to church, what you bought in the shopping cart. And a lot of times people forget that you're just a, you're an ordinary person. And when you're on TV, people are constantly grading you, judging you, critiquing you. And oftentimes they don't mean to be mean, but sometimes what they say can be hurtful. As in, I don't like that what you wore. I don't like your hairstyle. I don't like your voice. And they say it out loud, not realizing that you're a human being just like they are. So that part can be tough. You must have a thick skin to be on TV. You must be happy with who you are, how you look, how you talk, how you walk. Uh, otherwise, you will not last very long. Okay, so here's the bottom line. What I do is just like any other job. You have to prepare, study, train, keep on learning. It never ends. Most importantly, you have to love what you do. And there are some cases where you're worked hard, long hours. For me, I may have to cancel my vacation because of a hurricane, and that's part of my job. I have to accept that that's what I'm being paid to do. Most importantly, when you're younger and you're planning a career, Talk to people who are in that career, write letters to professionals, and try to learn more about what they do so that you're not just going into it blindly thinking you're going to be successful. Uh, also really important, and especially if you're going to be on TV, don't ever put anything on video that you don't want other people to see. <laughs> and by that I mean you don't want to do anything stupid, illegal, or immoral, because even though right now it might seem kind of funny as a young person, when you get to be 30, 40, 50, and you want to become president of the United States, somebody's going to pull that video out, and it's going to pull the rug out from underneath you. So for me, it's really important whenever I'm out to be the person I've always been, which is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent, and live by this rule, treat other people as you want to be treated. All right, another really important piece of advice for my business, a lot of people want to know me, in part because I'm the guy on TV, and that's fun, but a lot of times I'm never sure why people want to know me, whether it's because that I'm genuinely a nice person or because they just want to say, hey, I know the guy on TV. So it is super critical for me to choose the people I'm around very carefully. Even adults make bad decisions, and in my profession, if I'm with someone who makes a bad decision, it reflects on me. And I can't blame them for the trouble I get in. I can tell you, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, some of my best friends made decisions that almost got me arrested. Almost. If they had gotten me arrested, I may not have gone to college. I may not have the job that I have right now. So always be very careful of the people you choose to be your friend 
and be careful of the food you choose to put in your mouth just as well. You want to have a, a strong mind and a strong body. And in my profession as a performer, your voice must be clear, your skin must look decent, your hair has to look good. And all of that is all based on what you do as a young person. So when you grow older, it's all in place and you don't really have to worry about it.